uh, to uh, Prime Minister Imran Khan's heart, and that's uh, issues on environment, climate change, and I've shared with her our uh, desire to uh, plant 10 billion trees in the next five years to improve uh, the environment and the impact it has on economy and people. Uh, we've discussed uh, poverty alleviation and how uh, she has stood for uh, discrimination against uh, women and how important it is uh, 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 for this government. Uh, basic fundamental rights, protection of basic fundamental rights. I'm happy to say and I'm happy to uh, share with you that the, the, the views that the President has upheld all her life in different capacities and the vision of the PTI government of Prime Minister Ban Khan, there is a lot of similarity and that's why we had an excellent meeting. So thank you for visiting us. Thank you, thank you, Minister. Uh, through you, uh, I would like to really thank the hospitality and the friendship of the government uh, and the people of Pakistan. You yourself, uh, Minister Mahmoud, who uh, you know, a, a very uh, generous and very thoughtful uh, comments about the role of the United Nations, of the General Assembly, and uh, how important it is in the world we live in to strengthen multilateralism and to strengthen uh, the role of the United Nations. I think that uh, we, uh, you mentioned practically all the subjects that we addressed. Uh, I also took the opportunity to commend Pakistan for its full commitment uh, to the implementation of Agenda 2030 and the Sustainable Development Goals for the quest for a more uh, just an equal uh, Pakistan uh, for all based on, on human rights, uh, sustainable development, and, and peace. I think that uh, we agree uh, fully on the very important task ahead of us in the mitigation and adaptation to climate change. I think these one billion trees that have already been planted uh, should be a, a world record and uh, uh, your aim at having 10 billion trees planted in Pakistan only uh, speak well about the commitment of this country to environmental action and to combating the uh, um, terrible effects of climate change. I was telling uh, Minister Qureshi that uh, among the 10 countries that are considered the, the most vulnerable to climate change is precisely and unfortunately uh, Pakistan. Uh, we have seen, you know, the uh, adverse effects of, of droughts in the south, southern part of, of Pakistan, floods, the effects of El Nino in this country that are really uh, limit the capacity of a country to combat poverty and inequality, to guarantee food security. So every effort that is made uh, by this country uh, to uh, adapt uh, to uh, climate change, to mitigate, to reduce CO2 emissions uh, is uh, uh, welcome. It, it's highly welcome. But above all, I think that we have a collective responsibility to address this very important issue of, of climate change. I also commended Pakistan on the efforts uh, that the country is making to, move, to put women and women's rights at the forefront. Uh, I think it is very important. We cannot uh, implement and comply with the Sustainable Development Goals if we leave 50% of the population behind. Uh, we also discussed about uh, the importance of young people uh, for uh, the present and the future of Pakistan. Uh, as I understand the figures, uh, more than 60% of the Pakistani population are young people. We, we discuss about the big challenge of creating new, job, uh, new jobs for, for young people, uh, the commitment of uh, the government uh, to provide uh, with uh, 10 million uh, new jobs, especially 
uh, for for young people, and this also needs uh, needs to be uh, commended. Uh, the discussion about uh, two very important instruments uh, that have been signed and agreed uh, under the framework of the United Nations, both the Global Compact on Migration and the Global Compact on Refugees, are uh, extremely uh, relevant tools, roadmaps, uh, for um, fostering cooperation, burden sharing between countries of origin, transit, of destin and destination, especially of, of refugees. And uh, I also, I think that uh, Pakistan needs to be congratulated for, um, for its generosity of hosting millions of Afghani refugees in this country. So the Global Compact on Refugees and the Global Compact on, on, on Migration is going to allow, as mentioned, uh, to foster uh, greater uh, cooperation, uh, greater um, exchange of good practices, uh, and also burden sharing, uh, as mentioned, between countries of, of origin, transit, and destination. Uh, to, uh, to host uh, refugees in a country, I come from Ecuador, a country that also uh, hosts uh, you know, high amounts of, of, of refugees, in our case, uh, from Colombia. Um, it's, uh, it, it's really a, a very important burden in, in our uh, fiscal architecture. It requires a lot of investment, a lot of resources, and uh, uh, countries that have this generosity should, be also, uh, uh, should also be, you know, compensated, acknowledged, and, and recognized. So that uh, speaks well about uh, the commitment uh, of, of this country to people in human mobility, but people that are vulnerable and that are just leaving uh, their countries of origin be be because uh, they don't feel safe or they want to look for a better future for themselves and their families. And this is very much connected uh, to the peace process in, in Afghanistan. So I also... Um, commended uh, the efforts and the contribution that Pakistan is, is making uh, to uh, support and uh, accompany uh, the peace process uh, in, in, in Afghanistan. I think uh, uh, a prosperous and peaceful Afghanistan would benefit the entire region, and Pakistan, but also the entire region. So we had a very, very fruitful conversation. And I'm sure that I'm leaving an, uh, out uh, several of the issues we, we touched upon, but uh, once again, uh, I am uh, extremely honored uh, to be here in this uh, beautiful country, uh, to be able to meet uh, a new government uh, with, uh, that is extremely, extremely committed to sustainable development, extremely committed to uh, strengthening multilateralism, extremely Thank you very much, Madam President and Prime Minister. So, we will take a few questions, uh, Shumaira, for the uh, Madam President. Thank you very much, Shumaira and the APP. Uh, Madam, as for UN security uh, reforms, security council reforms, it has been 25 years that uh, the matter has not been resolved regarding the uh, membership categories and question of veto, etc. Uh, as holder of a prestigious office, do you think that the issue has been resolved through a consensus? And secondly, a number of countries is aspiring uh, to get permanent membership uh, of the UN Security Council. However, uh, one of those countries uh, has not so good track record vis-a-vis uh, -vis human rights violations. Uh, do you think that the area of human rights should be taken as an important fundamental uh, while considering the grant of permanent membership to any country? Thank you. The security re uh, reform process, as you very well mentioned, is a process that has been going on for 25 years. There is a negotiation mandate that was uh, established via resolution 10 years ago. Uh, where the uh, intergovernmental uh, negotiations started. 
uh, this is very much a member state driven process. So the pace, the depth, and the content of the reform will very much depend on the decision, the political will of the 193 member states. My role as president of the General Assembly is to ensure that uh, consultations are Are taken into account uh, in the process. It is, I cannot hide this from you, it's a very contentious issue. Uh, there is a mandate uh, to uh, the General Assembly to continue the negotiations and that this process will continue, of course, during my tenure. And uh, I, had, I have appointed two co-chairs for uh, the negotiation process and I am following it attentively, but I, uh, but basically, and I repeat, it's very much a member state driven process. Thank you very much. Uh, Shabir Bhagra sahab, PTP, for the foreign minister. The foreign minister sir, you said that the human rights violations and killings in the past few years have been a lot of more. So, has there been any big forum that the UN can play a role, especially in India? इंसानी हकों की पामाली का ताल्लुक है पाकिस्तान गाय बगाए इस पर बात करता रहा है लेकिन इस तफा एक थोड़ी सी नौयत पे तब्दीली आई है और वो ये है कि अक्वामे मुतहदा की नामजद करदा ह्यूमन राइट्स कमिश्नर की एक रिपोर्ट जून 2018 में आई है और वो रिपोर्ट जो है वो सर्कुलेट हो चुकी है पब्लिक डॉक्यूमेंट है सब ने उसका मुताला किया है और उसने उन सब चीजों को हाईलाइट किया है जो पाकिस्तान गाहे बगाहे कहता चला आया और उस पे उनकी सिफारिशात में से एक सिफारिश ये है कि اقوام متحدہ जिसकी क्या जनरल असेंबली की सदर हैं एक कमीशन ऑफ इंक्वायरी तशकील दिया जाए जो कि इन्वेस्टिगेट करे और हकائق जो है वो दुनिया के सामने रखे पाकिस्तान समझता है कि इसमें वजन है और इसको तवज्जो मिलनी चाहिए पाकिस्तान यह भी समझता है कि यह मसला जो है इस पे اقوام متحدہ की जिम्मेदारी है यह जो اقوام متحدہ की सिक्योरिटी काउंसिल है यह उसके रेजोल्यूशंस जो हैं वो आपके एजेंडा पर हैं कश्मीर का जो मसला है वो एक متنازع ہے ایک بین الاقوامی تنازع سمجھا جاتا ہے اس کو ریکگنائز کیا جاتا ہے اور ان کی ذمہ داری ٹھہرتی ہے کہ اس پر وہ اس کی اس کی پیش رفت میں یہ اپنا کردار ادا کریں اس میں کوئی شک نہیں کہ بے پناہ جانی نقصان ہوا ہے 90000 کے لگ بھگ لوگوں نے شہادت کا جام نوش کیا ہے بے پناہ ہیومن رائٹس وائلیشنز وہاں ہوئی ہیں اور ये भी आप जानते हैं कि आज जो लाइन ऑफ कंट्रोल पर वायलेशंस हो रही हैं वो तवातर से हो रही हैं और जिस तरह से वहां असला जमा किया जा रहा है हमारे पड़ोस में तो इससे खदशा है कि एक फ्लैश पॉइंट है और इस फ्लैश पॉइंट को एड्रेस होना चाहिए पाकिस्तान एक पुरमन मुल्क है हम अपने हमसायों के साथ अमन से रहना चाहते हैं लेकिन ये मसला जो है جو انسانی حقوق کا مسئلہ ہے یہ فوری توجہ کا مسئلہ ہے اور اس پر ہم سمجھتے ہیں کہ آپ جیسی شخصیت صدر جنرل اسیمبلی جیسی شخصیت جن کا ایک اپنا ٹریک ریکارڈ ہے بڑا نمائی ٹریک ریکارڈ ہے اپنا کردار ادا کر سکتی ہیں I'll just summarize uh, what the Honorable Foreign Minister said uh, we have been raised It mentioned uh, it enlisted the human rights violations that are happening in IOK. One important recommendation was the establishment of a commission of inquiry uh, to look into the matters and to put an immediate halt to whatever is going on in IOK. 
Uh, additionally, he also said that uh, uh, the UN Security Council resolutions are the fundamental Council resolutions. Uh, the human rights violations uh, have been gross uh, in Indian in, in occupied Jammu and Kashmir. Some 90,000 people have lost their lives, and uh, the use of pellet guns and use of rape as an instrument of um, a state for repression uh, is a matter of great grave concern for Pakistan, the, the UN, and the international community. Lastly, the Minister Saab uh, mentioned that uh, the President of General Assembly has a very, a very good track record on human rights, and she has done a lot of work uh, on human rights. Please. Amjad Ali from State Broadcaster, PTV News. Madam President, Human Rights released a report on massive human rights violations in Indian occupied Kashmir in June last year. So, my question is what you and the UN can do to stop India from committing these severe violations? And also, there are Security Council re resolutions on Kashmir. So, the people of Kashmir ask how you can play a role to implement those resolutions. Well, I think that as enshrined in the UN Charter, my role as the President uh, to the General Assembly is uh, to ensure within the mandate uh, that we have to continue to make uh, recommendations on the general principles of cooperation uh, for maintaining international peace and security. You very well mentioned that uh, you referred to a Security Council uh, resolution. I am the President of the General Assembly. But of course, uh, the Charter uh, is built in three pillars. The three pillars of the Charter are peace and security, development, and human rights. Uh, it is uh, the responsibility of all members uh, in every corner of the planet to respect and guarantee fundamental rights and the dignity of people. And these are the principles by which we stand uh, as uh, uh, the United Nations. Thank you very much, Madam President. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just go ahead and we'll see you at the panel. Okay, okay, I will see you later, Mr. Thank you. Vazir Kharja Shah Mahmood Qureshi, Rakwa Mutadam, General Assembly, Kisad, Maria Fernandez.